Hello. I recently watched Ian Hubert's Dynamo episode 4 and really loved some of the city establishing shots, so I wanted to try and recreate one. The scene itself is actually quite simple, despite how many small details it might appear to contain. If we break the modelling down into pieces, it becomes far less intimidating. The main elements I see are buildings, specifically a single floor with an array modifier, a detailed roof piece which contains fencing and extra greebles, and large cranes in the background. To model the building, I imported an image from textures.com and used the techniques in my previous video to model a single wall. I created variations of it and positioned these around the origin, then combined them into one floor. Adding an array modifier allows us to duplicate the floor. Now we have the shell for our building. The roof piece is modelled in a similar way, but I've also created some basic fencing and other small details which I stuck on top. When we backlight this, these details will create contrast and make our building look far more complex than it actually is. The fence is just cylinders with a metal texture. I extruded a curve around the perimeter of the building, then selected the fence and added an array modifier, followed by a curve modifier targeting the curve. Now just scale and position the fence until it matches. Now for the cranes. Once again we can break these up into smaller pieces. I see the primary frame, a back section which might contain things like a counterweight for the arm and a power box, various small pieces to break up the repetition, a few cables, and finally some red blinking lights. For the main structure we can add a cube, move it up in edit mode one unit on the Z axis by hitting G, Z, 1. This places the origin right along the bottom face. Now, select all faces with A and hit F3. Search for triangulate. Finally, add an array modifier to extend it vertically, and a wireframe modifier. Apply these modifiers once you're happy with the settings. To achieve a zigzag wireframe instead, start with another cube and move it up to the world origin. Extrude the top face up two units. You can now use the knife tool and connect two corners like this. Make sure that the opposite side mirrors the edges we just made. Then we just repeat the same steps we did previously. I like to nudge a few edges around with proportional editing to make everything a bit less perfect. You can enable proportional editing by hitting O while in edit mode. The scroll wheel adjusts the size of the selection. The real world is full of slight imperfections so it's a good idea to do the same in our renders. Modeling the back section is just as easy. It's pretty much just different sized cubes and cylinders which I unwrapped and textured. It's good to use a reference here to make sure you're not just adding random things like a steering wheel or an air conditioner. For the extra details, it's just a few cubes and other bits and pieces. Modeling becomes easy once you break something complex down into its primitives. If you want to add some movement to the swinging cable, first add a wind object to the scene. Now add a cloth sim to the cable, enter edit mode and select the top vertices. Assign these to a vertex group named pin. Now in the cloth properties, find the pin group option under shape and select pin. This prevents the cloth from falling down when we hit simulate. Finally, mess with the stiffness properties until it resembles a strong metal cable. It should only swing very slightly. To connect the extra pieces and make everything move together, jump into edit mode and click a single vertex along the bottom edge of the cable. Now, while still in edit mode, hold control and left click our hook object in the outliner. Finally, come up here and select vertex, make vertex parent. Now we just need to move our mesh directly on top of the cable and make it a rigid body. Make sure you check the animated box. To texture the cranes, I unwrapped each piece using the cube unwrap method, then dragged the UVs around. I combined multiple images into a single texture atlas so I didn't need to assign multiple materials. The node setup was pretty simple. I just used the color as an input for the roughness and specular maps. I added a bump node as well and turned the metallic slider up. To quickly add the same material to multiple objects, select the objects you want, then select the object that already has the material assigned and hit Ctrl L, link materials. A quick tip. You can view textures in solid view by coming up here and changing the color from material to texture. For the red lights, we can model a simple mesh. Select the glass section and create a new material and assign it. Now plug a red color into an emission shader. We can make it blink by adding a keyframe to the emission strength. Then select the light and the emission shader, open the graph editor, then open the side panel with the N key. Select built in function, sign. Turn the phase multiplier down to adjust the speed. To light the scene, we can just add a blue color to our world shader and turn the strength way down. You can use an HDRI if you'd like to add a bit more variance to the color. The original video also had moving clouds. We can achieve this by importing a video onto a plane, scaling it and placing it way in the background. Shortcuts like this are important to know, especially when working with deadlines. 
We don't have time to simulate everything. Smoke cards are another easy way to add realism to a scene. They're just videos of white smoke over a black background. I used a 24mm focal length with a 1.8 f-stop. This is to simulate real low light photography. A lower f-stop means more light is hitting the sensor, which is crucial for exposing the shot properly. I animated the blur effect by focusing on an empty object, then moving that empty from right in front of the camera to the building using keyframes. Finally, I jumped into the compositor and added the usual suspects. One pixel blur, color grading, glow and some film grain. If you're looking for a fast way to add fog to a scene, enable the mist pass in your view layer properties. While in render view, come up to this drop down and change combined to mist. Now open your world properties and adjust the mist pass depth. Switch back to combined when you're done. Now in your compositor, you'll notice your render layer has a new socket named mist. To add the mist, plug your image into a mix node, select a color you want for the mist and plug the mist socket into the factor. Now tweak the amount with a color ramp. This is much easier to render than full-on volumetrics and can look just as good in some circumstances. If you look closely during the final shot, you can see a very tiny camera shake I added in DaVinci Resolve, because the zoom sound effect also includes some additional camera handling noises. I believe tiny details like this really help sell the realism. I've made the building and cranes available on my Patreon. They aren't the most realistic models, but they're more than enough for background elements. They also don't cost $500. If you found this video valuable, please like and subscribe so I know to make more. Thanks everyone, I hope you found the video helpful.